Hey everybody. Um, I figured it might be a fun idea to start doing some episodes on me restoring my axes. Just to just to share what I do and how I do it and maybe maybe y'all can learn something or maybe it's just fun for y'all to watch. I don't know. Um, now I'm still learning so this is just how I do it. This is how I've learned from other people that hang axes. Um, so today I want to show you how I take the handle off of an old axe head to then restore it. So I think I'm going to start with this. I don't know if y'all can see that. Let me see. Yeah. It's a true temper flint edge. And this is a this is a swamping pattern. It's hung upside down on the handle, but that doesn't matter because we're going to take it off anyway. Um, I'm trying to think of other things to say about it. Well, anyway, let's get to it. I'm going to readjust you. Now, uh, I don't know what situation y'all might have but I just use a, a bench vise that's on the side of, uh, of your working table. And uh, this is just, I only have this because I do some smaller woodworking projects. But if you have like a mechanics vise that sits up on top, that will also work. That will hold your, your piece also at an elevated um, at a, at a higher angle so that you can reach it better, I guess. Um, so now, what I do is I take either a coping saw or um, a saw like this. I prefer the coping saw because if the, um, if the axe head has any kind of curvature in it, you can follow that curvature. Um, because of, of the, the saw blade being so skinny and it's also adjustable you can you can turn it either way so I just start cutting being sure not to hit the the steel I'm gonna get real close to that actually. Adjust my saw. To a better angle. Let's see. Alright, there. See how that works? So now the the blade itself is turned so this the bar doesn't get in the way but you can also turn it so you have more of a of an angle as you're cutting so you don't hit the steel here And we're through. That's it.
it's always good to save those old handles if they're hickory handles because you can use it for a whole array of different other projects like if you have an old hammer you can make a hammer handle out of something or out of a, an old handle okay now next thing we have to do now that this is oops, sorry now that it is cut off see that there being see being careful not to hit the steel at all next thing we have to do is drive the remaining wood out of the center here so we're gonna have to hit it down through here and it's gonna come out on this side actually because it was hung upside down we're going to hit it on this side and it's going to come out on this side because i'm just going to measure real quick uh the top of the axe head is always going to be a little bigger than the bottom so that as you are wedging the top it expands to hold the head onto the handle So, I was correct. This this side is the top, which ironically it was the bottom of the axe. Um, but it's a, it's an eighth of an inch of difference between this side and this side, which definitely tells me that this was that this is the top. So. It's nothing complicated. I just took two, uh, uh, I think this is a piece of the two by four. I don't know. I think it's a little small, a little smaller. So anyway, I, uh, I cut out these grooves here so that it elevates. Let's see if you can see that. <laughs> see that so what these do because they have notches in them is it it grips onto the to the axe head and stabilizes it so that we don't necessarily have to hold it as we're driving the wedge out or sorry the the center piece of wood and just sits like that. Now, well, you know, it falls over. You got to hold it while you do it, but these notches help. Now, what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to make a, essentially a punch. If you have steel punches for like, for steel working, then those will work just fine. Um, generally, people say to, to drill the wood out. I don't prefer to do that because you can end up, if you're not careful enough, you can end up damaging the steel. So what I do is I just cut it really close and then take the rest out with, with a punch. Um, so I think we can just go ahead and get to that. Let's try it. Grab a, an ordinary hammer. Let's see. There we go. So I can see it moving a little bit. Not a whole lot, though. 
Actually, you know what? That's really cool. I didn't see that when I got this axe head. I think I'm starting to see some eye ridges in there. See, one, two, three. Those help grip the handle. So we're making our way through here, a little bit at a time, see it's coming up, that's going in, set it up like that, take your wedge, or your punch I should say, hammer, and then just keep going. So now by this point, the punch is is actually getting stuck in there because it's it's now the same width as the axe head. So I can just take that out. That's the old piece of handle there. So now let's see. Let's see if I can get this out. <laughs> to put it in the vise. And knock the wedge out with the old piece of, of axe handle. There's both out. That went quite smoothly, actually. So, there you can see, let's see if y'all can see that. Those eye ridges right there. One, two, three. One, two, three. So, I'm not uh, completely sure on the history of of why those were put in there but I think they look cool and they certainly keep the, the handle on so I'd say that was the end of part one of the restoration of this swamping pattern double bit went quite smoothly and I'm glad I got to show you all how that how I do that uh, it's looking quite nice, actually. It's a pretty one. I think, uh, next episode, I might either put this on the, on the wire wheel to clean up some of the rust and pitting. It's not terrible, but it, it's just, just take a, give it a nice patina shine. Or, I might restore this uh, Rockaway Plum. Love this axe. Okay, thanks y'all for watching. I hope you guys have a wonderful and happy day. Thank you.